Okay, you're looking at buying a laser, but you're not exactly sure where to start. There are a ton of different versions, a lot of different styles, a lot of different companies that are out there. In this video, we're gonna walk you through a full buyer's guide that's gonna help you do two things. One is answer the question, what exactly are the features that you need for what you want to do? And two, what are the lasers that best fit those features for you? Okay, let's jump into it. Hey, what is up? Welcome back to the shop. My name is Brandon and I get to do a ton of these different laser reviews. I've got a few of them actually set up right now. You can see there's a bunch of diode lasers over there. I've got one of my CO2 lasers back there and there's a big Glowforge back there. So I'm showing you that because I've had hands-on experience with a lot of these different machines we're gonna be talking about. I've got to test them out. And here's a playlist of all the different lasers that we're gonna be talking about that I have reviewed hands-on in the shop. So before we jump into specific machines, there's really five different categories that kind of change depending on the machine and what you are looking at. And these are really going to relate back to what you actually want to do with your machine. So first is going to be power. So how strong is the actual laser? This is measured in watts and we're going to have a range from five all the way up to 130 watts. Second is going to be size and this is actually the work area. So some machines are going to have a pretty small work area. So like 12 by six inches. The bigger machines that scale all the way up to even four feet by two feet work beds. The third is going to be the actual machine size. So not the work area, but literally how big is the machine that you're going to be working with. That's backwards, but you get the idea. So like the CO2 laser over here obviously takes up a lot more space than one of these diode machines. And the fourth has to do with features. And this is everything from internal cameras. So you can kind of see what's on your work bed to autofocus for your lenses, to air assist, to exhaust systems, to a bunch of different things. And these lasers really range from pretty minimal features to really decked out features when you get on the high more expensive end. And then number five, the last thing, which is probably the first thing that you look at, that is going to be the price. And speaking of price, I do want to talk about our sponsor for this video, which is real appropriate, and that is ClickLease. So ClickLease offers financing for a lot of these machines. So if you're going to be looking at one of the more expensive machines, those are going to cost you potentially thousands of dollars. And if it's for a business, you might be thinking of it in terms of how much ROI you can get from the machine. So ClickLease is going to offer you financing where you can pick up one of these machines, have it starting earning money, and paying that machine back. And as we go, I'll mention the machines that ClickLease currently partners with but there's also a link down in the description if one of these companies don't offer financing you can basically request it through ClickLease and you can potentially get that set up. We're gonna break this into four different categories. We're gonna have diode lasers, we're gonna have CO2 lasers, we're gonna have desktop CO2 lasers which is like the Glowforge behind me and then the final category is gonna be pro level CO2 machines which I have one in here it's just you can't see it because I ran out of room. A ton of the lasers I'm going to mention I have affiliate relationships with so if you do decide to pick up pretty much any of the lasers that we talk about this channel gets a kickback and you help support the channel. And I like to think since I actually have multiple companies sending me units to review, I'm not biased towards a specific one. So first let's jump into diodes. And if we're looking back at those five major features, these are going to be machines that range in power from five all the way up to 20 watts. And typically their work area is going to be in like the 15 to 16 inch range, both in the X and the Y. And then in terms of the actual machine size, uh, they're not much bigger than the work area. So you can see like with this guy right here, whoop, this is the Atom Stack. X20 Pro, uh, a good size, but it's really not much bigger than the work area. So these are nice and portable. So diodes really aren't very bulky. They're really easy to move around. In terms of features that are definitely on the lower end, some of the more expensive diode machines are gonna have air assist. And all that is is a compressed stream of air that is helping put out any flames and also give you a really clean cut. So when you're using like a 10 or a 20 watt diode machine, you're definitely gonna want air assist on it so you get really clean cuts, but you also reduce the risk of having flare ups. And speaking of flare, ups most of these machines will have some safety features most of the time if you bump it or tilt it the laser is going to turn off if you disconnect it from the computer which is running the software the laser is going to turn off and some of them even have a fire sensor on them so if they detect a flare up then the laser is going to turn off as well. And then last but probably the most appealing part of diode machines is the fact that they are relatively cheap. So we're talking about a range from $200 up to $1,100. Okay, so let's talk about the machines. Again, I've done reviews on most of these. We'll go way more detail in those reviews if you want to check them out. But when you're looking at diode machines, instead of a real specific laser, I would actually look at the company first and then kind of decide what your specs are. But a lot of them have these laser modules like this one from Alfa 
Sphero, even though it's still connected. You can buy these separate. There's a single or multiple laser diodes inside of this guy. This moves around on the gantry, and this is what gives you your laser beam coming out. But the nice thing about those diodes is they are all contained in one unit. So you can actually upgrade your machine by getting a bigger laser head. But these are the companies I would recommend you checking out. X-Tool, Atomstack, Otour, SculptFun, as well as Niji. And Otour was kind of the one that first started, at least for me, these laser diode machines. They made a lot of improvements and they actually just released their Laser Master Engraver 3, which I have and I need to do a review of. But it is a nicer version of their cheaper machine machine, which is this guy, the Alfero 2. I think this one is about 250 bucks. And actually the cheapest diode that we've got is going to be this guy, which is their Alfero 1. And most of these companies are going to have kind of two similar designs. One's going to be like a full frame, which is what the rest of these are. And then another one's going to be this cantilever frame where you don't have the same work area, but they are going to be a little bit cheaper. Now Skullfun is pretty similar to Otour and most of those other companies that are out there. And I've done a review of this guy in the past. This is the S9. I actually have an S10, which is their 10 watt version of this machine. And for the most part, the performance is pretty much the same as what you see from Otour. Now where things start to change is when we jump up to Atomstack. And Atomstack actually sells the most versions of their lasers. So if you're looking at diodes, you can pretty much find anything in terms of size as well as power that you might want. This is their flagship machine, the X20 Pro. This is actually a 20 watt laser module. It's actually kind of heavy, so I'm gonna put it down. But they're nice because you kind of step up the build quality. They have this nice external screen where you can do some of your controls directly from it, as well as a nice emergency stop built directly into it. And overall, the build quality on Atomstack is really nice. And then finally, that brings me to my pick for this category. And that is going to be X-Tool. This is their D1 Pro. This also is a 20 watt laser module. It has a good sized work area. And overall, I just like their build quality and their fit and finish over any of the other machines that are out there. Now, because of that, they are also the most expensive. So that machine is the most expensive on the diode side. That comes in at about $1,200. But they also have cheaper versions of the D1 Pro. They go all the way down to five watts. So you're definitely well under $1,000 at that point. And just like with the other machines, and then you could upgrade your module as you go. So the one thing you really need to think about when you look at these machines is ventilation. So you can see there is no enclosure with them. Now, some of the manufacturers sell an additional enclosure. Just know you're going to have to add that to your price as you go. In my case, I'm in a big garage. So most of the time I just open up my garage door and have fans blowing on it. But the bigger CO2 machines actually have fans built in with ducting and that gets ducted out of windows. So just know you can't buy one of these and drop them into a school setting and be good to go because you're going to have to deal with those fumes. Also, the light that the diode lasers make definitely will hurt your eyes. So you can see most of these have a filter at the very bottom of their lens that blocks out most of the light. But even with that, I find you definitely want to wear tinted safety goggles that they provide like these, because even with the tinted piece on the laser, I still find light will bleed out. And you definitely don't want to hurt your eyes when these are running. And then one feature that a lot of these dive machines don't have out of the box is going to be air assist. Now, Atomsec actually does provide a compressor as well as the hose that you need to add air assist to your machine. For X-Tool, that's going to be a separate purchase. And for a lot of them, that's going to be something that you're going to have to add on. Okay, for our second category, let's talk about budget CO2 machines. You're gonna be looking at the power range between 40 and 100 watts. In terms of work area, you're kinda of in the 20 to 27 inch range. Then the machines themselves are going to be a good bit bigger. So this is actually a 60 watt budget CO2 machine from Ohmtech. And you can see that this guy is very large. And that's because CO2 machines work a lot different than diodes. Instead of just having a standalone laser module, the actual laser is generated from a CO2 glass tube, which is in the back of the machine. Then a set of mirrors bounces that laser beam around until it comes out the end through a lens, which gives you a really nice focused beam. And as a result, you get a machine that is much bigger to be able to house that light path. Typically, you're going to have a bigger Z depth, meaning that the bed of the machine can drop further down so you can get thicker pieces of material. Versus a diode machine, you kind of have just a couple inches you can play with. But the benefit is you can pretty much like put this on top of your work material if it's really thick. Then the CO2 machines you're going to have to put inside and then actually close 
the door on top of it. Now, when we're looking at features, they're gonna be pretty basic. They are gonna come with an exhaust system as well as air assist. A lot of times that air assist is just gonna be an external compressor that you have to put next to it. But then CO2 machines also need a way to cool their laser tubes. And the cheaper machines pretty much just do that with an aquarium pump that you just drop into a bucket. Then it just cycles water around the CO2 tube. And that works totally fine. It's just a little janky when you have it set up, but you do save money versus the solution that the higher end machines use. Now, when we're looking at price, we're in the two to $5,000 range. So definitely a big jump from those diode machines. There's one caveat, and that is actually the desktop 40 watt unit. And you might've seen these referred to as the K40. And those are great. They're just really small in terms of their work area. And then a lot of times they take a good bit of tinkering with and playing around with to get them working the way that you want. And the K40 specifically don't actually support light burn, which is the software I pretty much use to run all of my machines. You have to do a lot of tinkering. So if you're looking to buy a hobby machine that you can upgrade, K40 is a great option. But if you're wanting a machine to actually start working for you right out of the box, it might be the best fit. And that's why I really start this range around 50 watts. And there's really two main companies that I would recommend you taking a look at. First is going to be Ohmtech. And Ohmtech was actually the very first laser that I purchased with my own money way back in the day. I actually bought it off of eBay. <laughs> So I got this big crate that I've actually already taken apart. Here's a quick picture. Back then they were called Orion Motor Tech, but since then they've rebranded and they've done a bunch of different updates. But overall I find while they're not really that smart, they're definitely big and powerful and you can get the job done with them. Now the other company is Monport. They've actually reached out to me. I haven't reviewed any of their machines and kind of looking at the two, I think they're pretty much the same machine at the end of the day. They're just getting white labeled by different companies and then they have their own support and their own tweaks that they do individually to their machines. Now for the machine I'm gonna recommend, it's actually going to be this guy, this is the 60 watt machine from Ohmtech. It's got a manual bed. It comes in at 3000 bucks and it has a really nice work area of 20 by 28 inches with a nice deep bed where you can drop down that Z axis. Now, why do I recommend the 60 watt versus some of their cheaper versions? Honestly, the big thing is just you get a nice big work bed. Having that nice big work bed is really nice if you're cranking out a lot of parts. And then another benefit I didn't even realize I was going to want that this comes with its own stand. So this is lifted off the ground and it's on wheels. So it already is pretty much at the height that you're going to want it to use it. There's smaller units, you're going to have to build some type of stand to lift it off the floor, or it's just going to be really far down when you're working with it. Now, going back to financing, I know Omtech offers ClickLease as one of the options if you want to check that out. And one of the nice things is how fast the process is. So we're going to do a quick demo of me applying for financing for this laser. I'm going to put in my phone number if I can do it, as well as the last four of my social. I'm going to blur all of this out. They're going to verify your phone number. And then depending on how you're set up, you might have to give them additional bank information as well as some business information. And they actually have approvals from 500 all the way up to $25,000, which you can see right here. Now, our third category is going to be desktop CO2 machines. And these might be the ones you've seen the most. They definitely are the ones I get advertised the most. Specifically, the Glowforge is going to sit squarely in that category. Going back to our grid, you're going to be looking at power between 40 to about 50 watts. And the work area is like 10 to 12 inches in the Y and then about 20 inches in the X, depending on the machine. On the feature side of things, these are typically tricked out. So most of them are going to have cameras. They're going to have integrated air assist as well as cooling. They're going to have exhaust. A lot of them will also come with their own custom software. They're going to have Wi-Fi connectability, but you do pay for that. So coming back to the price, the range is going to be 3000 on the low end and then going all the way up to around 8,000 on the high end. Now in this category, pretty much there's just one machine by each company other than Glowforge. Glowforge actually has three different versions. They're basic all the way up to their Pro. The Pro is the one that I have done a review on if you want to check it out. Now the big pro to Glowforge is it is super easy to use, probably the easiest of any machine that I've got in my shop. And the big con of Glowforge is they use their own software that is all web-based. And I know a lot of people don't like that. They don't like being locked down to a specific piece of of software. Now actually Full Spectrum, their Muse does the same thing. They also offer their own cloud-based software. I believe you can actually run it locally from your computer as well. I've done a review of the Full Spectrum Muse 3D in the past as well. And then we also have machines from Flux, specifically their BMO. I have seen some people use it. I have never been hands-on, so I really can't give you my opinions of it. But one that does look pretty interesting from them is their 30-watt unit. 
because of its size. It's a good bit smaller than something like a Glowforge or Full Spectrum Muse. And then we've also got the Make Block Laser Box. Again, review right up there. And it's actually from the same company that makes the Xtool D1. I really don't get why they have two different names, but my overall recommendation is actually the one that I have reviewed recently, and it might just be recency bias, but that is the Gweek Cloud. I have just been calling it the G Machine because I have no idea if I'm saying Gweek right. What I like about it is it pretty much packs all the features of the higher end Glowforge. And that machine comes in at the lower end of this range in terms of price at $3,500, but it includes pretty much all the features that the higher end machines do. And in fact, the Glowforge Pro is several thousand dollars more expensive than the Gweek for roughly the same feature set. But the big benefit to the G machine is the fact that it supports light burn, which pretty much sold me on it from the get go. But really the con with that machine is it is all overseas. So it's a Chinese based company. And that isn't to speak really to the build quality, but more to the support. So if there's something that's going to go wrong, know you're going to be dealing with support coming from another country. And that is a big benefit that Glowforge does offer because they're based in Seattle, Washington. All right, we're rounding third and coming home to our fourth category, and that is our high-end CO2 machines. In terms of power, we're going to start at 50 and go all the way up to 130 watts. And then in terms of work area, as well as machine size, it's going to be pretty similar to what you're going to find with the budget CO2 machines. Because when you come to the features, it's basically like you took a budget CO2 and you added a lot of upgrades. Not only like the cool cameras and tech that you might find with the Glowforge, but also stronger stepper motors, better limit switches, automatic Z axis, just a lot of bells and whistles that allow these machines to perform better as well as faster. And then because of those extra features, our price is going to go up. So we're moving from the low end 3000 for our budget CO2s up to 5,000 for our higher end CO2s, and that will go all the way up to $15,000, depending on the size and the configuration. Now you're really looking at three main companies. You've got Aon, you've got Thunder Laser, and you also have Rabbit Laser. Now the best that I can tell with all of these companies, they're basically importing industrial machines from China, and then they're doing some upgrades and tweaks stateside, and then selling them from there. But the nice benefit of that is you also get US-based support. So I know Aon is based in Florida, Florida and Thunder is based in Texas. And actually Rabbit, I have the least amount of experience with other than just like looking at their website. So take that or, or leave it. But I do have some friends that have the Aeon machines and those look really nice, especially their Mira series seems to be a really nice sweet spot if you're looking at those. But the machine I'm actually gonna recommend is gonna be coming from Thunder and it's going to be their Nova 24. So it's one of their smaller machines, but it does give you 24 inches for your work bed. And that's gonna come in at $7,400. Now I am going to be doing a full review of the Nova 24. So if you're asking yourself, what are you getting for all the extra money? You can basically buy two of these ohm tech machines for the Thunder. We will cover all of that in the future. But just in my time with it so far, all of those upgrades are really nice. The machine runs a good bit faster. They actually include a chiller unit with it. So that's a combination compressor as well as a water reservoir, as well as a chiller to that water reservoir. So these budget CO2 machines, again, you're just using like a plastic bucket. But with these machines, the chiller actually chills the water. So if you're running in hot environments, like my garage is right now, that's why I'm sweating, your tube is gonna be able to last a long time. Okay, so you might've gone all the way through this, but you're still asking yourself, I really haven't seen a lot of metal examples. Can these machines do metal? And the answer is sorta. So stainless steel, you can do with diodes or CO2 machines because there's that stainless coating on top of metal. If you're gonna be doing bare metal like bare steel or bare aluminum, you're gonna wanna look at a fiber style machine. So that works totally different. They are super fast, but also your work area is going to be pretty small. So they're great for marking part. And I've done a review of a machine from Omtech right there, as well as a really nice MOPA style machine in that playlist as well. Now the price of these machines is high and again that is where the sponsor of this video comes in and that is Clickly. They've got a relationship with Thunder as well as Aon. So if you are in a business setting and you're thinking more in terms of what is the profit that these machines can crank out versus more of a hobby style machine that you're just going to tinker with, definitely take a look at their financing options. And because you're still here, a kind of not so secret secret, I actually do a lot of work for Inventable. So the maker of the X-Carve, the X-Carve Pro. If you've seen any of their videos, you might've seen my goofy mug and glasses on them. Venables recently offered ClickLease as one of their financing options as well. So even from the back end of that relationship, I know they definitely are legit. And I encourage you guys to check them out if that's an option you think is going to make sense. 
And I know in the comments, people are going to be saying, hey, Thunder and Aeon, those aren't the only high-end machines. Actually, there are some that are even better. So there is a tier that's like higher plus end. Uh, and those are basically going to be companies that are based in the US that do their design work and build most of their machines here as well. These are gonna be companies like Epilogue or Trotic or Universal Lasers, or as I like to call them, the ones that you can't find a price because they want to give you a quote because they're so expensive. But, but really my recommendation is if you're looking at one of those machines, don't listen to some guy on YouTube because those are super expensive. I definitely recommend talking to those companies and do your research. I would love to know, do you agree with my picks? Let me know down in the comments. Until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys. Woo, 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 that's a lot of talking.